The, those who enter into Islam the most today among the genders are women. Which is as surprising as all get out, especially when you consider that Allah and Muhammad portray women as worse than men. In a number of ahadith, Muhammad reportedly said that women are deficient in intelligence and religion, and that the majority of the dwellers in hellfire are women, precisely because women are intellectually and spiritually deficient and bent on hell, Allah and Muhammad have laid excessive restrictions and punishments on women beyond those laid on men. For example, because women are intellectually deficient, the Quran teaches that a woman's testimony is only worth half that of a man. And because she's spiritually deficient, prone to disobedience and bent on hell, a husband has the right to beat his wife not only for doing something wrong, but even if he fears that she might be disobedient. This is Minority Report with a Vengeance, where precogs are replaced by a husband's suspicions and paranoia. Even though these observations and criticisms are based on the knowledge of what Muhammad stated in the Quran and Sunnah, it's at this point that everything I've said, which others have said a million times over, gets cried down as or chalked up to Islamophobia, an irrational or baseless fear of Islam, an accusation which is most often made, interestingly enough, by those who refuse to read and deal with what Muhammad said. Well, for those who refuse to read, here's Abu Musab, Wajdi Akari, someone who could hardly be accused of Islamophobia, saying exactly what I just said. The, those who enter into Islam the most today among the genders are women. Even though the, the women in Islam is portrayed as the worst. I mean, the males say, okay, you have to have a beard. Fine. You know, Harley Davidson driver, you know, riders also have a beard. I can manage that. But the Muslim woman, that means she has to cover her, her hair and she has to change her dress code and she has to do this and she has to obey her husband and she cannot do this, she cannot do that. That's a lot of restrictions and women enter into Islam. While we can certainly appreciate Abu Musab's refreshing honesty and smart from the fact that his forthright admission gives the lie to those who cry Islamophobia, nevertheless there's a devastating incongruity in what he just said. On the one hand, following Muhammad, he, like other Quran-quoting, hadith-toting Muslims, believes that women are deficient in intelligence and religion. On the other hand, he boasts that those he takes to be dimwits and spiritual pygmies are embracing Islam at a faster rate than men. In other words, if we accept what Muhammad said about women, then it follows inexorably from Islamic premises that Islam is a religion preferred by dimwits and dummies.